Hi, everyone. I'm Rob Sinclair, Atlassian's Head of Accessibility. And it's my pleasure to spend a few minutes with you today talking about the road ahead for accessibility at Atlassian. So I've been in the tech industry for about 20 years, and most of that time was spent at Microsoft building their accessibility program from a small team to a company-wide commitment that helped products like Windows, Office, and Xbox deliver some of the most accessible experiences in the industry. So we are starting a similar journey here at Atlassian, and it's exciting. Um, we have great products like Jira, Confluence, and Trello that have become essential to great teamwork in teams all the way from two-person startups to Fortune 100 companies. So the work that we do for accessibility will ensure that these team environments are inclusive for everyone. Now, this work is rooted in our core mission as a company. You've heard us talk about our belief that behind every great human achievement, there's a team. Well, our mission is to help unleash the potential of every team because we know that teams are the ones solving these key problems today. And accessibility will ensure that everyone in that team can participate fully. I think for me, this is one of the reasons I'm at the company is accessibility is such a profoundly empowering pursuit and it aligns so well with Atlassian's mission that I see tremendous opportunity here. So I'm excited for the journey ahead. So I think it's also interesting to start with the philosophy of what is it that's driving our work and how do we think about accessibility? So there are three things I wanna talk about. The first is that we do believe accessibility leads to more innovative products. This is because accessible design and the process that's involved does improve usability by creating more flexible experiences that can adapt for more scenarios and more needs. Um, if you've ever used OXO kitchen tools, you may have noticed that the handles are curved and they're cushioned so that they're very easy to grip and to use. Those were originally designed to help solve the problem for someone who has difficulty gripping, perhaps because of arthritis. Similarly, electric toothbrushes were invented to alleviate the challenge of someone who has limited dexterity and isn't able to do the fine motor control and motions required to brush your teeth. And then if you think about Siri and Alexa, these intelligent agents that we're all using today, you may not realize that two of the most fundamental technologies they use are actually originally created for addressing the needs of a person with a disability. So when you speak to the device and it can recognize your voice and your words, that speech recognition was originally created to allow someone with no use of their hands to interact with a computer. Similarly, the ability for that agent to speak to you, the synthesized voice, that technology was originally created for an audience who is blind or has low vision and can't see what's on the screen. So these foundational technologies are shaping our daily life, whether that's you know, physical tools like the kitchen tools or these advanced agents. Accessibility is driving innovation in a number of places in the market. Now, the second element here of our philosophy is that accessibility is not only for people with disabilities. This is related to the first point, but different, because what we're saying here is that, yes, accessibility solutions are beneficial for people who have a permanent disability that's actually created by the barriers that they experience in the, either the physical environment or the digital environment. However, many other people, in fact, I would argue all of us, ex also experience barriers in our daily life. This could be because of a temporary injury or a situation that creates similar barriers to us. For example, a very noisy environment makes it difficult to hear. So you may have found yourself using closed captions on a TV across the room in a pub to actually follow a news story or hear the broadcaster describing what's happening in a game. Similarly, you may have used captions when watching a show, TV show, and understanding an actor that has a thick accent. So these technologies are integrated into our daily life because we all experience similar barriers on an ongoing basis. And even the natural process of aging causes our vision, our hearing, our dexterity, and even our memory or how we solve problems to change over time. So this isn't a fixed world. We're all actually experiencing different barriers and constraints all the time. And finally, accessibility is absolutely fundamental to creating more inclusive societies. 
to enabling people to pursue education and housing and travel and have a job. Um, this is all about eliminating barriers in these aspects of life. And in fact, the Kessler Foundation did a study in October of 2021 that showed that among adults of working age, 73.5% of people not living with a disability were employed. However, the same cohort for people who are living with a disability, only 33.2% are employed. Now, you may assume this is because of their disability, but in fact, a large percentage of those people actually have a degree, they have experience and great expertise to contribute but it's because of the barriers in either the physical or the digital work environment that prevents them from being employed or even pursuing employment. So accessibility is foundational to many aspects of life. And I think what the ultimate conclusion for us is, has to be that accessibility is just good business. More inclusive companies perform better than their peers. And we know this, because the World Economic Forum did a study in 2019 that was published after analyzing four years of performance of companies who invest in accessibility as compared to those companies that do not. They found that companies investing in accessibility and inclusion found 28% higher revenue, 30% higher margin, and double the net income because they're building better products that are usable by more people that address systemic issues that our societies are trying to tackle. So we see this as a massive opportunity, not only for Atlassian, but for all of our partners in the ecosystem. So this is something we're very excited to begin investing in. So with all that, let's talk about the pillars of our program. There are four that I wanna to talk to you about today. The first is the program and structure the people, the, the talent that we need to solve these problems, of course, the technology, and how we're thinking of integrating this across the business. So the first one around program structure, we're choosing the hub and spoke model because it allows us to centralize deep subject matter experts in accessibility and build a set of scalable, reusable resources, tools, and guidance that allow every team to do accessibility more easily. This begins by ensuring we have the right people in the right places in the company to do this work, um, that we actually take all the external standards, laws, and regulations and compile that into one canonical set of standards and guidance that allow each team to understand exactly what requirements are needed and how to actually satisfy those requirements. For those of you who are familiar with accessibility, this is where we bring in things like the web content authoring guidelines, um, regulations like the U.S. Section 508 and the EN 301-549. So it's important to us that our teams don't spend time trying to interpret external standards and requirements, that they actually spend their time doing the work. So this is what our internal standards allow them to do. We're also working across disciplines in the company to integrate accessibility into the way our researchers, designers, engineers, support engineers, et cetera, actually do accessibility as part of their daily work. We are also working with our engineering and product lifecycle teams to incorporate accessibility checkpoints, tools, and processes into each stage of the journey so they know what to do and when to create an accessible product. And then of course, we're working with platform and product teams on their own plans, their roadmaps. We provide guidance and support, we provide consultation and reviews. So this is really about ensuring that these products maintain ownership and responsibility for accessibility, but they have the full support of our team and the company to actually do that work most effectively. The other advantage of this model is that it allows us to scale the accessibility program and investment as the company scales and grows. So it's it's a very nice way to actually ensure you you have consolidated resources while maintaining responsibility in all the right focal teams. The second pillar is people. We all know that the people are key to achieving any great work. And so we are working with our diversity, equity, inclusion teams to ensure people with disabilities are seen as an integral part of our 
diversity at the company, and that those employees feel fully able to come to work. They feel like we have the right support systems in place so that they can actually be highly productive and successful in their careers. We are also working to increase the diversity of our own workforce by establishing programs and systems to ensure we are recruiting and hiring people from these diverse audiences to ensure we have the greatest talent pool. We are not only focusing on people with disabilities and employees, we're also ensuring that we elevate the awareness and understanding across all of Atlassian so that every employee has an understanding of why this is important and how we're going about it. The fourth is external to the company, engaging with the disability communities around the world to ensure we have a very clear perspective on how they're experiencing our products, what they need from us, and also that they are hearing back from us. What are we doing? How are we prioritizing the work? And what progress are we making? So this relationship between Atlassian and our teams and the disability community is really an essential component to leveraging the collective experience of our users and customers to ensure we're building the most accessible products. And then finally, we do have people in the company who are working full-time on accessibility or that it's a large percentage of their role. Those people, are very dedicated to accessibility and they understand that this is actually a career path. So we are putting systems in place and support in place to help them grow that as a career and be rewarded for the work that they're doing. Now, one example of this is that we're working with the International Association of Accessibility Professionals to actually help formalize this career path within Atlassian and make things like the IAAP certification programs available to our employees to help grow their knowledge, and extend their network across industry to work with other people who are also working on accessibility. So this area is really all about ensuring we have the right people doing their best work, and we have the most diverse perspectives possible to inform our own investments. Now, this all leads, of course, to the products and technology we build. We have a fairly complex technology stack and so not surprisingly, we're taking a layered approach, beginning with the platforms and frameworks, our design systems and our engineering systems. These are the three essential components of any foundation. And so they must be fully implemented for accessibility. This allows us to reduce the complexity and ensure more consistency in implementing accessibility above these layers in our products and services. So once that work is done, the frontline designers, researchers, and engineers can actually do their work to create highly personalized, inclusive experiences more easily and more consistently with less time, actually, because better tooling and better frameworks provides less work higher up in the stack. As we build products, it's essential that we incorporate accessibility testing throughout the process. So unlike some other areas, we can't do all of this through automation. It's some combination of automation and manual testing, where manual testing in particular is essential to ensure that people who are using adaptations in the experience or rely on assistive technologies, that their final experience is accessible. So this means we also have a manual testing pass using people with disabilities, as well as people who are using assistive technologies. And these are full-time assistive technology users. So we are truly bringing the customer in to ensure that we are delivering an accessible experience. And then the final piece is as we put all of these components in place, we refine our own processes and we learn how to do this very effectively across the company over the coming years. We will be sharing this also with our partners in the ecosystem so that they also can incorporate accessible design and inclusive innovation into their own processes to create the accessible and inclusive Atlassian ecosystem alongside us. And the final component is going beyond the technology and building the products and thinking, how do we actually integrate accessibility into the way we think as a company and the way we function? Because it's as we've talked about already, there are people, there are other assets that are essential. So human resources, we've begun to talk about. We're working with them to think about specific ways to engage the community, hire and recruit employees, and then ensure that we are providing the adaptations and support they need once they're in the workplace. 
Second is with our customer support teams, looking at not only ensuring that each support channel is accessible, but also working with them to train support engineers so that they understand accessibility, they're familiar with the technologies, and they're familiar with the terminology so that they can actually have a meaningful conversation with customers. And ideally, we want to reach the point where we actually have support engineers in the company who are living with disabilities and are users of assistive technologies, because then they can truly have a full fidelity conversation with a customer to ensure that we understand what is or is not working well for the customer. So events is another component where it's very important for us to ensure the physical venue itself is accessible, the digital experience is accessible, and the content that we're providing and the conversations that we're having are inclusive for everyone. This also includes ensuring and providing the right services to ensure everyone can participate. So this would think, include services such as sign language interpretation or audio descriptions if we're showing media content. So part of the event experience is ensuring that everyone can participate and benefit. Now partnerships, we've talked about some of our work with enabling our own solution partners to create accessible solutions and products. But this is also about engaging with assistive technology vendors for those compatibility tests that we were discussing, as well as ensuring that we're providing the right foundation for them to build great assistive technologies. And then there's the element of working with the disability community and advocacy organizations to ensure that their members are being well represented and having a great experience with our solutions as well. The fifth component is how we communicate about accessibility. So this is really around our responsibility to ensure that not only are we building accessible solutions, but we're engaging in the industry in a way that helps elevate understanding of the importance of this work and that the transformational impact it can have on the lives of our customers as well as all technology users. So this is a lot about elevating the understanding awareness of what we've discussed earlier. It's about better products, good business, and enabling inclusive digital workplaces. And finally, this also extends to the work that we hire. So in our contracts and licensing, the way we procure, we're also planning to put higher bars in place to ensure that those vendors and contractors are also living up to the new accessibility standards that we have. So it's all about integrating accessibility into not only the way we build products, but the way we think of running the business and the way we incorporate it into every facet of how we think about delivering great products. So we've talked a lot about where we want to go. I also think it's important to give you a sense of where we are today. So we already have my central team in place with a great team of experts. We are already consulting with teams, providing them expertise and guidance and reviews. We have the first version of our internal standards created, and we are delivering training and workshops to help elevate our internal experience um, as a company. Um, as our services grow and expand and we start to bring on additional capabilities, the team will also naturally grow. And so keep an eye out for upcoming postings uh, for new roles. Um, similarly, our engineering work has been underway for several years um, within our platforms, our design systems, and our flagship products. Now, these teams at the moment are focusing primarily on their key task flows so that they can deliver the highest value for our customers as soon as possible. Once they've completed that work on those key tasks, they'll actually naturally expand that to encompass other aspects of the products so that eventually we have fully accessible products. As they grow their investments and as each of these folks comes online, they also will be hiring more people to do accessibility. So another opportunity to keep a watch for. And then finally, as we think about this model and we put these new components in place, we do have teams already piloting the new hub and spoke model and some of these new services so that we can refine those before rolling them out across the company. So I hope it's clear that we have very different aspirations for where we're headed. Uh, now, this will clearly take time to put in place, but we are well on our way, and I would encourage you to join us in the Atlassian community to ask questions and share your perspectives. Um, also, feel free to check out our website at atlassian.com slash accessibility. Um, we'll be continuing to increase the level of content there over time as well. 
Um, and in the meantime, if you have questions, feel free to also, if you have an account manager or a premier support contract, you can always ask them. Also feel free to reach out to my team at a11y at atlassian.com. Thanks very much, everyone. I appreciate you attending my session and I hope you enjoy the rest of Team 22.